G'day, it's Bill here from Optics Central. Um, today we're doing an unboxing video. This is a Celestron StarSense Explorer LT70AZ. Um, now, the Celestron StarSense Explorer is a pretty new development. It's only been around for a year or so. Um, and it bridges the gap between a manual mount and a computerized go-to mount. Um, now, with a manual mount, you do everything yourself. You point the mount at whatever star you're trying to look at and you you have to keep on moving it every so often to chase the star. With the computerized go-to, um, you tell the mount, once it's aligned, you tell the mount where you want to look and it will move the mount to find whatever you're looking at and it will continue to track it for you. The StarSense Explorer is a cross between the two. It's what we call a push-to rather than a go-to. Now, it, it uses your mobile phone to look in a little mirror to read the stars that it's, it's pointing at. Uh, so, so the phone knows where your telescope is pointed. You tell your phone where you want to look and it will say, okay, from here you've got to go left and up and you know, it will talk you through finding whatever subject you've, uh, you, you've programmed into it. Of course, then you have to keep on chasing the star because it's, there's no motors in this. The Celestron StarSense Explorer comes in a range of models. Um, there's some small to medium refractors and reflectors. That's most of the uh, most of the range. But towards the top end of the range, there's a couple of Schmidt Cassegrains. There's a, there's a six inch Cassegrain, which is actually quite a large instrument. Um, as to the market, it would suit beginning to a uh, beginner to intermediate astronomers. Um, and the the great thing about the StarSense Explorer is it shows you things you didn't know before. So, I mean, anyone can find the moon and the planets, um, but if you're interested in finding some more obscure nebulas or even some larger nebulas, um, you don't exactly know where they are, this will find them for you and show them to you. So it's, uh, it's really good at getting you up that learning curve. Um, this one is, like I said, the LT70AZ small refractor. It's the baby of the bunch. So um, let's get into unboxing it, shall we? Okay, here we are, we're going to unbox the Celestron StarSense Explorer LT70AZ. Um, I love unboxing stuff. Uh, let's get into it. Okay, the first thing we've got is the documentation. There's always documentation with, the, with, with these things. And with Celestron, the documentation is actually pretty good. They've got uh, lots of easy to follow instructions. This is the quick setup guide and at the back I think there's also a, uh, a guide for using the, the app. Uh, some marketing stuff, uh, product registration, there's a StarSense Explorer um, app thing, I probably should grade that out, um, and some uh, additional uh, download for the Starry Night Celestron, uh, Celestron Starry Night software. Let's have a look at the hardware. Uh, we'll start with the, we'll start with the, with the, uh, the tripod, shall we? Oops. Try not to break the box. Here we have the tripod. The tripod is, it goes left to right and up and down, which we'll get to in a minute. This little guy here is the telephone dock, which will be important for when you're actually using the app. Stay there. Uh, that goes onto the, teles on, onto the telescope. Stay. Put that a little bit further around there. I'll build this. I'll build all of this later on. The telescope itself. These are the knobs that go on the side. Well, in 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 there. I'll get to those presently. This is the star of the show, presumably. Much packing. Desiccant, do not eat. Don't look at the sun. Okay, there's the telescope. And the final thing in the box, 
out the way slightly. This is the accessories. Okay. Let's see, we have eyepieces. This is a 10 millimeter eyepiece. Put it there. There's a, that's a 25 millimeter eyepiece. This is a right angle. Might as well take them out of their, out of their boxes. The locking ring for the, uh, for the altitude bar. This is a Barlow. Uh, this is a little, a little, a little uh, screwdriver slash um, nut. And a red dot type finder strip. Okay, I think that's all the parts. Uh, we can start getting it together now, shall we? Okay, let's start building it. I've, uh, I've raised the camera angle a little bit. First, we, we need the leg spreader. This is actually a, a combination leg brace and um, uh, uh, accessory tray. So that goes on there and, it's, and, it, and it spins on. If I get it right. There we go. And they say best to stop it where it doesn't. There you go. That'll, that'll keep the, yeah, the, the legs nice and steady. Uh, obviously, you can increase the height of it. I'm not going to do this for the, uh, for the purposes of the camera, but these yeah, extend just there. Okay, here's the telescope, the, the telescope tube itself. And it goes, obviously, with the, with the, uh, with the brand upwards. And this little, uh, little arm goes through this little hole, hole there and enables you to adjust the altitude. Just get that in there, in you go. Now, these axles go inside there, like that. And then we tighten with three bolts. There's the ones left and right. I won't tighten them up just yet. And oh, there it is. This is the altitude locking knob, and it goes in there. Now, what this does, is adjust the altitude. Once this is locked like that, you use this guy to move it up and down just gently. That's good for good for when you're chasing planets as as the Earth turns. The uh, the the azimuth, obviously, you just you just move like that. Okay. Um, let's see what's next. Let's put on the uh, the, the finder scope, shall we? I'm just going to bring it around here. The finder scope goes on these two knobs. I'll just get rid of these. Now, this goes on there, and the nuts go back on. Now, finder scopes are very difficult to adjust. I've written a blog on how to, how to adjust finder scopes, uh, which I'll probably put up here somewhere. Um, but coarsely, uh, they, 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 they can move around a, a bit, so, so you, have to, you have to sort of organise it so, so coarsely they're correct, and then you can do fine adjustments with these, this thing. That's a completely different topic. However, that's the way, it, that's the way it goes on. Next thing is um, the... Let's get rid of that. And that, and that. That will go on here. Now... Astronomical telescopes generally come bundled with a right angle. Terrestrial telescopes generally come bundled with a 45 degree angle because it's easier to, um, to, to look at things. Particularly if, you, if, you, if you're up there, it's, it gives you a much better angle. The, uh, if you're, if you're down, down here, it's easier to get a 45 degree angle. So this is clearly an astronomical telescope. Uh, now. Any one of the um, uh, the eyepieces, the eyepieces just unpl unplug there. They're they're built to go inside, inside there. You, 
undo that little thumb screw and the eyepiece, I always start with the 25. Uh, it's always good to start with a wider angle so that you can see what, you, what, what you're looking at. And here's your telescope. It's currently, uh, it's currently built like a manual telescope would be. Um, if you're itching to go out and look, so, look at something in the, in the night sky, you can do it right now. Um, take it out. Um, you'll need to adjust the finder scope uh, and, and, and look through the 25 millimeter eyepiece. If you want to zoom in, you use the 10 millimeter eyepiece. Um, but yeah, if you want to just get out and, and, and have, a, have a look at things, now's the time. The next thing, the next thing I'm, I'm going to do is put this, uh, put this phone thingy on. Now, underneath here, you'll find a mirror. It's a fairly high quality mirror. The trick to it is to get your, your, your phone sits in this little cradle here. You, uh, you, you stretch this, this guy here and it holds your mobile phone in that, uh, in that pocket. And then you move backwards and forwards. It's like, it's like the, the Celestron's Nexus mobile phone holder. You, you, you move it backwards and forwards and up and down, up and down, so that your camera gets the best view into that mirror. Um, I can't show you my mobile phone because that's it up there. Um, so it, it goes on just there, and there's a little dovetail, and a couple of a couple of locking screws to get it in. So now your phone your, your phone will be sitting there, looking up the um, uh, looking up the uh, up, up at the sky, in the same direction as the telescope. And you can um, then you, you start getting the app going. And I'll do that in the next section. All right. To install the app, you go to the Google Play or the App Store. That's uh, as normal. Um, you download it in the normal way and um, install it. But remember, there's a lot of information in its internal database, so be ready for a large download. Um, now, you launch the app and uh, go through a little help thing. It's a sort of a, a small, small tutorial, and you enter the activation code that you find in the card in the telescope box at the end. After that, you won't need to re uh, you won't need to uh, re-enter that code. Okay, now we've got the uh, the the app on the phone. There it is. Um, you need to calibrate the phone to the telescope. So what, uh, this is a two-stage process. And what you do is uh, the, the first stage, you, you need to make sure the, the camera on the phone is, in, uh, is pointed at the center of the, the mirror. So now you, you adjust the, uh, the, the, these knobs here. To, well, bring that up and click on that and it says needs alignment. So now I can move the telescope of the, the phone left and right. So you can see there's a bit of obscuring there and on the other side, so that's about right. And then move those down. So we've got a clear view all the way around. Okay, once we've got, once we've done that, the second part is we use the 25 millimeter eyepiece and point the telescope at something in the distance. You can see that um, I'm shooting out the window and down across some factories. There's a small aerial that's popping up over the top of that stuff in the distance. So I've found that in the eyepiece. It's in the middle of the field of view of my eyepiece. Now, um, I can see the same object, but it's very small, but you can pinch and drag. As you can see, there's the, you might be able to see it, there's the, uh, the aerial sticking up, so we just move that so that it's right on the crosshairs. And then press done, and we're right. It's ready to locate objects now. Now, um, from now on, don't bump the phone cradle and don't move the phone. Um, and if the ring, phone rings, you're gonna be using hands free. Okay. Okay, we're back in the backyard now, um, and what I've done is I've just got the, um, the phone in the cradle, and I'll just bring up the app. Um, by the way, I'm not taking video of this 
so you'll just have to imagine, I'm taking a couple of stills, so you'll, you'll, you'll have to see the stills. Okay, it's, right, it's ready to reserve, you've tapped the star sense icon, so I'll hit that for now. Right, uh, now, is it still aligned? Yes, it is, that's what we did before. So, now, it's mucking around, it's taking a, uh, taking a, uh, taking a photograph, plate solving, figuring out where it's pointing, and just bear with us for a second. There we go. Oh, can't find a... Oh, that's because I'm looking at a tree. Okay, let's move it. Move over there. Okay. Okay, now it's going to have another go. Oh, finding telescope position. Do not... Okay. Okay, it's found one. Right, so it's it's near, near the butterfly cluster. Unfortunately, the butterfly cluster, cluster is also behind another tree. I've got a lot of trees in my property. So... But let's have a look. I can see the Edacarina Nebula. So let us uh, go find. Uh, let's see. Eta object name. E T A. It's in the uh, Eta C A R I N A. Search. There we go, Eta Carina. Let's go to the nebula. And oh yes, it's going to tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, okay, that's not that's all very well. Lo hit the locate button, shall we? And it's up there. So what we do, just move, 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 move. Go up a bit. I oh, have to unlock the telescope. Up a bit. Up a bit. Up a bit more. Oh, it's getting close. Oh, I hope I can get that height. All right. Now, once it's close, it will take another photograph and then tell me where to go. Oh, not very far. Let's move it in a little bit and, oh, okay. Notice it's gone green. Now I just look in the telescope and I can see, well, we're in the city. Oh yeah, I can see it. There we go. That's really cool. Okay. Now, what, what's, what do we want to see next? Oh, this is fun. Oh, right next to it is, uh, is the, I believe that's the um, uh, Southern Pleiades. So let's have a look. Let's move it around. Yes, it is called the Southern Pleiades. I'll just move that that way. Oh, 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 oh. Right, I might have to do a bit of fine tuning. Oh, missed it. Oh, there it is. There. Green. Now we should be able to look in the uh, the telescope and see the Southern Pleiades. Uh, and there they are. That's magic. I just have to move the tel telescope a little bit. There they are. Ah, geez, isn't it fun? Now you notice it's got off just a little bit. It's finding a telescope. Yeah, okay, it's just re 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 centered me. That's fantastic. Okay, I think we've um, we've pretty much figured it out. So um, uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, so look, clear skies and have fun with this thing. It's great fun.